Right, this video is going to be all about refreshing your trigonometry, okay? And calculator at the ready, um, we're going to go through some key ideas that really you ought to know in preparation. Now, uh, first things first, making sure the calculator is in degrees mode, which thankfully mine already is. Um, the reason I expect a lot of teachers have always said before the exam, make sure your calculator is in degrees mode, make sure it's in degrees mode, make sure um, in A level we're also going to be using it in the other mode that the calculator has, radians. Okay, so th the reasons behind how that works and why we'll be using that will come later. Okay, so you've got that to look forward to. Right. First one, it's just a right angled triangle. With right angled triangle, we can use our simplified form of trigonometry. Okay. Um, no, I'm not going to bother drawing up the triangle again. So, with a right angle, we can use what well, I was always taught, Sokotoa. And I expect you've been taught a similar way. Um, whether or how you remember this is up to you, okay? Uh, you may have heard some fairly rude versions of how to remember this. I'm not going to repeat it here, okay? Um, just in case any parents disapprove, of course. Okay, so um, uh, I'll, I'll keep silent. Um, so, um, Sokotoa, first of all, label your triangle recognize that this is the side that is opposite the angle in question, so that's the opposite, the O. This is always the hypotenuse, okay, the H, and this is the adjacent, okay, so A, O, and H. We are looking for O, and we have H, so we want O, H, so we're going with S, O, H, so that means that sine of 37 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So x is equal to 8 lots of sine 37. So we plug that into our calculator. 8 times sine of 37 degrees, which is 4.81 to two decimal places. Okay. Then number two. Well, number two and three and four. Uh, we're not dealing with right angle triangles here. Number two, uh, we are needing to find a missing angle. Okay. Um, now, if you're looking for a missing angle or a missing side of an irregular triangle, so one um, that isn't right angle that I'm using that term to mean in this case, you've got the sine rule and you've got the cosine rule. And it's really your job is to determine which is going to be the most appropriate. Now, in the case of number two, you have an angle, an opposite side, and an angle, an opposite side. So that means that really what we can use is the sine rule. So because we're looking for the angle, put the signs on the top. So sine theta over the opposite side, 21, is equal to um, sine of 32 over its opposite side, 18. Now if you multiply through by the 21, you can get sine theta by itself. We have 21 sine 32 over 18. So we plug that into our calculator, 21 times sine of 32, divide that by 18, and you get 0.618239, okay? Then if you inverse sine that, so inverse sine or arc sine, inverse sine the answer, you get 38.19 degrees to two decimal places. Okay, so that's the angle, and that's using the sine rule. 
So little tricks there really are either if you're looking for a side, um, then have the sides on the top of the fraction in the numerators. If you're looking for the angle, have the angles, the sines, in the top of the fractions. Okay, have a quick drink. <clears throat> Okay, um, number three. Well, seeing as I've thrown an example of sine rule, it's likely that the next one's going to be cosine rule. Okay, the reason out well, the way that you can identify whether you would need to use cosine or sine rule, sine rule is looking for opposite sides and angles. Cosine rule uses two sides and the angle between them. Okay, so we've got two sides given to us and the angle. And we've got the opposite side to find. So that is uh, cosine rule, lends itself to cosine rule. So cosine rule uh, is probably best to label the